Well, good morning, everybody. I guess everybody just sort of felt like starting the new year by hearing a bunch of talks about wildcatting and oil and gas prospecting and learning from some of the best in the business. I'm glad you're here. This is the first ever inaugural uh, APG DPA Playmaker program. And I have a little story. Uh, one of the greatest pieces of advice that I learned from my father he used to play tennis at Far Rockaway High School, and he uh, played at a pretty high level. And his main piece of advice to me that I remember as a young kid was, if you want to really improve your game, you've got to work with the folks that are really good in the business, or really good in, in whatever the, the, in his case, tennis. And he always wanted to play with the best players to help him improve his game. Well, I didn't go into tennis, but I did go into the oil business. And in order to improve my game, I want to learn from the best oil finders I can. And I think a lot of people feel the same way. And fortunately, APG and DPA has some of the best oil finders in the business, and many of them are here today. I want to thank you all for attending. We have uh, folks attending from all over the U.S. I'm really thrilled Cape Hitz came to be with us from California. Uh, we even have a guy who came from Mars, Pennsylvania that is, Dan Billman. I want to thank the speakers for sharing. I think it's a wonderful thing to be able to share your hard-won knowledge. I want to thank our sponsors. You can see we have sponsor uh, plaques up here identifying wonderful people and organizations. Uh, their financial support will help DPA with educational programs like the one we're uh, engaged in today and also with our GODC office, which is our public outreach. We have an office in Washington, D.C., helping to put informed information in the hands of legislators. Imagine that. I want to thank, um, well, I want to recognize some DPA past presidents. I see quite a few of them here in the audience. If you're a DPA past president like Will Green right here, would you please stand so we can give you a round of applause? And HDS president, Martin Cassidy, he's sort of our home team captain. Martin, are you here? And of course, Susan Nash, Norman Newby, and A.B. Mann at APG headquarters have been fabulous. They've been a great help. I'd like each of you to stand, and also Linda Sternbach, who's not just helping me with the program, she's a fellow DPA member. And a special thanks to David Curtis, our APG and DPA executive director, as David reminded me this morning. I have to say, uh, David has been a supporter of this program from its inception, which we were talking about this morning is about a year. This program has been at least a year in the making. And when David and I visited, we said, you know, who, should, who could we get to be a big name speaker that would get people to, that would draw people, that would make people want to attend? And without hesitation, David said, Harold Hamm. And we both looked at each other like, great idea, how do we do it? And I struggled with that for a couple of weeks. And then I've noticed in my uh, career as being a program uh, speaker, engager, that there's a divine providence at work. Because usually when I need something, I get help just in time. And Harold Ham was speaking uh, after David and I talked at the Petroleum Club in Houston. And I had an opportunity to meet Mr. Ham. And we shared a couple of mutual friends, and we told some stories. And I, well, bottom line is, Mr. Ham will be here speaking to us today at lunchtime. He's, he'll be here with us at lunch, and then he'll be here speaking as our lead-off talk for this afternoon. And we're delighted about that. And since I'm your DPA president this year, I, I have to say a word or two about uh, DPA. And I think the programs and the publications, everyone has a copy of the Heritage of Petroleum Geologist. You should. It's, it should be with you uh, from uh, the handouts when you checked in. If not, please make sure you get one. There's some great career stories for everyone. And, and if you only read one, I'd read Phil Anschutz's story. It's a great example. But to tell you the truth, they're all pretty good. 
And a DPA has other publications, like Guiding Your Career as a Professional Geologist. Now, uh, Dan Billman, who's the geologist from Mars, Pennsylvania. Dan, would you please stand up? Okay, I want to recognize Dan. He is the vice chair for the APG program in Pittsburgh in May. And he's been doing a great job. The Pittsburgh committee has been doing a fabulous job. And DPA is going to have a lot of programs there that I hope will be beneficial to you. We're going to have three courses. Uh, Dan Tierpak, who will be speaking here in a minute as our lead-off speaker, is going to be talking about quick look techniques. Uh, Mark Gallagher, who's here, is uh, helping, has been a major proponent of getting a geosteering course that will be part of the program. And Bob Shoup, who's also here. Bob, would you just wave a hand? Bob stood up as a past president of DPA a moment ago. He's going to be talking Black Belt Ethics Luncheon. We also are going to have our DPA luncheon, uh, Patrick Leach of Decision Technologies. Everything we know is wrong. That's going to be interesting. And we are delighted that Edith Allison, who is the GODC director, is organizing a forum, a DPA forum, on the demand side of natural gas price equation. And we'll have a discovery thinking forum. And several, it's sort of special to me because I've been involved. Uh, Ted and I started the Discovery Thinking programs in 2008, and since then, uh, we've put on six programs all about discoveries, and I've been lucky to work with guys like uh, Ed Dolly and Paul Weimer, and uh, we're going to have talks on uh, Bill Zagorski, who's here today, is going to talk about the Marcellus there. We are going to have uh, Bill Barrett. The Wasatch Green River is the first, I'm told, the first lacustrine shell organic clay. We're going to have the Horn River Devonian shale gas from British Columbia, so we're sort of stretching out into Canada for that one. We're going to have a talk on the Niobrara, and Shane, who's also going to be a speaker today, Shane Matson, is going to talk about the Mississippi and Lyme. So we're trying to expand the conversation so from not just shale clays, but to lots of unconventional clays of various types. And we, in, in the Discovery Thinking program, it's a continuing legacy. We've had six forums so far. There are 500 to 800 people attend each of them. We're in the planning stages now for Pittsburgh and Cartagena. And I think the most notable thing is about 40 talks on discoveries by the people who made the discoveries are on search and discovery. So if you go to the APG webpage, look under the search and discovery, there's a special collections tab. And if you're a student of oil and gas exploration, you really want to understand how a field or a play was made, you can go back and you can study that presentation. And I think that we're getting a, that's a very learning on demand type of way so that you just don't try to capture the talk while you're sitting in a room. You can actually go back and be a student of that. Our motto for DPA this year, empowering geologists to discover energy and excel in business. And this comes from, uh, Marlon Downey is a good friend, and he made a very good point. Geology is a science, exploration is a business. And I believe that DPA does this better than anybody else. We merge science and business. You have to have the two to really succeed. And I think networking is extremely important, and that is, we have more than 3,000 members of DPA, and when we set this program up, we have education talks this morning, prospecting skills, workflows, this afternoon is going to be a lot of analog of major plays and emerging plays, but th because the networking is so important, we have two networking breaks, we have a networking lunch, and we're going to move to another room for lunch so that you can meet some new people. And we're going to have about 20 to 30 young professionals joining us throughout the day. I really encourage you uh, to please share some stories with them. So we are in the Red Oak Room, a couple of announcements. We are going to have a reception tonight at the end of the program in the Magnolia Room, and that's where we're going to have lunch today. Uh, for those of you who found the breakfast over in the Elm Room, that's where our, our breaks are going to be. And we know that everyone is busy, so if you need to get away to take care of some business or to make a phone call, we have anticipated that, and we have the pecan room, so you can go and, and, and visit with people. So the big plan for the day, think of this like a football game. Super Bowl is two weeks away. 
We have four sessions, or four quarters. This morning we're going to talk about the art of exploration and prospecting workflows, both conventional and unconventional. There's a lot of new things to keep in mind about unconventional, how it's done. We have a networking luncheon. Think of that as the halftime entertainment. And then this afternoon, we have established plays and emerging plays. And then, of course, the icebreaker at the end. So, what are we going to learn this morning? We're going to learn 10 habits of highly successful oil finders. What a catchy topic. And I'm sure everyone has their own habits, but let, we're going to hear from uh, Dan Tierbach here in a minute. We're going to hear about exploration creativity. We're going to hear about creative entry into successful plays, selling your prospect, and I can't resist, Steve, since this is sort of geared for prospect expos, I was going to say it's selling your prospect, and in parentheses, but not your soul, at prospect expos. And we're going to talk about workflows and unconventional plays. Uh, that's what we're going to cover this morning. And then, as I mentioned at lunch, I would really like, if you would, during lunch, to sit with a different group than you're sitting with now, meet some new folks, be sure to thank our speakers, be sure to thank our sponsors, and if you are able to visit with a young professional, please share some stories.